So again, what we'll be learning today, what exactly is the cloud, what are the benefits of the cloud, why we need to learn the cloud, what cloud option we have and what skills you need to be job ready. And there's two other point, uh, which is not a slide, I'll be explaining uh, myself manually via, uh, via sketch and all, uh, which is uh, what uh, cloud path to choose and how to utilize existing skills set to get a better paying opportunity. That I will explain via some graphing and all. Look, that's why it not in the slide, but maybe in the final draft of the draw I make, I will share with this document. Okay. So, all good. Now, let's get started. Okay. So, the biggest query that what exactly is the cloud? And you know, the funny part, uh, once I was watching a you know, TV show, uh, once some elderly man uh, saying like, this cloud is the real cloud and some... Uh, then networking sometimes not work if there is uh, rain happen and all. So that's uh, that I know not all, but uh, few might think that way who don't have a very in-depth uh, knowledge of the cloud. So to break that myth and uh, uh, that what really cloud is. So cloud is like uh, so here when you're talking about the cloud, we are meaning that it's cloud computing. What that means that see normally you run your application in your local computer, okay. And uh, that you run an all good, maybe you run uh, in your office computer and you show that the demo to the users uh, or the clients. But think about a scale. If your app is growing, app is very good and it's in demand. That demand cannot be handled via on-premise server or your local computer, isn't it? So to handle that case, Someone came with the concept of running, like utilizing all the resources, like who can afford it and then can rent it to other guys, okay. Here the cloud players are coming, we are calling them cloud service providers. So they are coming in the scene and they are saying, look, you don't have to purchase your all this computer, you don't have to uh, purchase the networking, like networking high packages. For the internet connections, I am paying more than 20, 30,000 rupees, right. So if suppose I am hosting a server and uh, I am serving the customer. They are saying, no, you don't have to do it, okay? You just build your application or suppose uh, use any service with our uh, cloud service that I am giving and serve your, app, uh, serve your customers via our resources. So you don't have to make a capital investment. So if you think that you need a like a 32 uh, CPU and uh, say 32 GB RAM, that will cost a fortune. I think maybe you know, three, four lakhs to be honest. Uh, not less than that. So they are saying you can really, if you need it, you rent it on the cloud. You don't have to pay all that big amount. You pay as you go. So it's a pay as you go model. You use it. After you're done, you can stop it. And if you're getting good, uh, like the customer uh, using your application and they're paying for it, you are getting good money from that. Yeah, keep using it. Keep using services because you are paying customers. And you don't have to manage the capital investment. All you have to do, pay as you go and that also there is a competitive market. So whoever, uh, cl whichever cloud service provider the cheapest and the best uh, resources, as a customer, we as a customer of the cloud services, we go to that particular cloud provider and uh, purchase that cloud in that cloud resources could be like uh, say uh, we have a WordPress portfolio application or maybe any kind of application, okay, one single application, and you are going to AWS. So in AWS you are creating either EC2 instance. And uh, then you have you are doing SSH into the machine, or you can do the, uh, use their uh, uh, in session session manager kind of thing. Where by the, by the browser itself, you can um, uh, go there and uh, set up everything. Then you have your WordPress application. Simply install that WordPress application via the SSH or via the browser window, and then set everything up and make that application running. So in that way, in the local, if you are developing something, you don't have to. Uh, serve from your local or from the on-premise system. You are doing by the cloud size provider. And so, so ultimately what I mean from all this defined, what I'm saying is that cloud computing is nothing but on-demand delivery of IT services over the internet on a pay-as-you-go model. Instead of buying it and, uh, you know, instead of buying, you don't have to maintain like, data centers or your on-premise servers. And you can access all that services from anywhere in the world, right? And what, what are these services? So there is like key services. First is the compute, like the instance I'm talking about. Those are the compute services. Like, you know, two CPU, three CPU, five CPU. Doesn't matter, if you need a thousand CPUs, you can have it, of course, for a huge cost. 
<laughs> so, uh, but if you think about thousand CPUs and uh, in your local computer, that doesn't make sense. You know, in the local on premise, that doesn't make sense because that is so costly that you cannot think about the cost even. Okay, but if you are talking about the cloud, you may start thousand instances if you uh, just like you know the request for the limit increase and all, and then for one hour you can run it and stop it. You can then you can do it. But in the local computer, you cannot possibly imagine that. Okay, so what cloud giving you? The scalability is a huge scale. Okay, you can serve any number of customer or clients. Uh, the your and your application can support that if you run your application on many instances, right? On many cloud servers or many uh, machines. That resources cloud gives you. So what what is the final one? So instances I talked about. Then coming to the storage part because your application. Of course, it's some kind of files you need to store in a, a cloud instance and then run it. So some storage needed. Not just that, people are coming to your site and uh, they are logging. Maybe they are signing up. They are giving some information. They are logging. So you need to use the stored information and allow them to logging. They may upload the files. They may delete the files. They may uh, kind of you know do any kind of things. Okay, whatever we permit as an application developer or as a admin, what you assign them. But that data need to be stored in a secure way, right? Okay, that data security part you can handle by the cloud, and that data storing part also at infinite scale you can do by the cloud. So cloud give us the compute one, they can use the need to uh, the data, and then then comes the one of the very unique element or very the basic element that need to working. Because think about that, if you have a file in computer, uh, you have to upload it, right? Any like git or anywhere you need to store the data somewhere. Or maybe in the other instance also that you need the connection. Same way, suppose you are showing some demo uh, in your computer and all that. For that also you need computer so that other people machine can communicate with your machine and then you can share the screen, isn't it? Now think about the sites. So that application what you have it's stored in a cloud server, okay? That uh, stored not maybe say running, and that need internet connection. So that other people all over the world, or maybe a region you restrict, can call your like can access your application either via the uh, like domain or via the IP. Okay, I'll be maybe in the future session I'll be talking more about what is IP and domain. Even in my YouTube channel also one dedicated session on networking basic full course you can watch that. So what they're doing here that it's giving you all these resources networking. Compute storage, okay, and then you can your run your application using these basic elements. And what are the big players in this uh, cloud market? Amazon Web Services, AWS. We have Microsoft Azure, and we have Google Cloud. But these are the main players. What is what I mean by the main players? These are the top leaders. But there are other uh, provider also, just like DigitalOcean, Rackspace. Uh, there is the uh, uh, LinkedIn provider. Something is there. So there are a lot of other service provider there, but The number of services, the number, of, the, the the huge scalability offered by these three providers is unmatchable by the other providers. Okay, that's why if you want to, you know, success in your cloud career, you must master any of that uh, cloud service provider, either AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. I don't know. Whatever you choose best, you can go for. But if you go for the marketing uh, leads, AWS have the higher edge. That means the huge demand is uh, for AWS. Azure also high demand, but less than AWS and GCP has less demand than the Azure and the Microsoft Azure. So Azure and the AWS. So again, based on the project you want, like what cloud you're interested in, or uh, what you like more, so explore all three and then check out which is your understanding better first, or maybe you are uh, able to uh, you know digest all the knowledge first. Go for that one, and then you can learn other clouds. Not a you're not in the hurry. But start with at least one cloud, big cloud provider, either AWS, Azure, or uh, GCP. Okay, remember that part. Okay, so I think you got the clear in in like layman language in common term, cloud is just someone else's computer. Yeah, it's AWS or Azure, and we are just renting out the computers, and then we are utilizing the services, but. Always remember one single thing: nothing is free. Okay, you have to pay a cost. Maybe you're not paying immediately, but think this is a scheme. All cloud service provider, any anyone that gives free is either you are the product because it's free, or maybe if you're using services, they're giving some few free time or free trial. 
then make sure you set the budget so that the cost doesn't get overboard otherwise you will see at the end of the month huge bill because you didn't check the documentation or the pricing page before so whatever you do whatever you do while learning cloud and all first learn about the costing so all cloud service provider aws azure gcp whoever it is they must have a price catalog page or the price calculator just go there and then first understand what service you going to apply, try just search by the services you will see the option there then select which instance type or which uh, database type or whatever type of data i mean or service you're utilizing or what is the cost of it after you confirm the cost then only try that and apply this knowledge the the cost knowledge whenever suppose let's find now we are learning but when you join any firm work in a professional level you must make a quote of the services that you're going to use and save that quote in uh, that uh, full quote in some pdf document or in a word document send to the head of the team or the cloud team confirm once if you're just getting started once they approve then only go if you are already experienced like 2 3 or 4 years experience in the particular cloud or devops then it's fine but otherwise you must go like that way okay now next part so what are the benefit of the cloud so i think most of the benefit i told you already but uh, now let's uh, you know just you know uh, just for the sake of understanding the benefits in a greater depth we will be deep in that so very first thing cost saving of course you don't have to purchase all that resources in your home or in your office you are just renting them out you are just uh, you know utilizing for a short term or maybe long term but at a cheaper cost because you are not purchasing them or you are not paying you are not giving any maintenance charge for them you are just paying for the cloud service uh, that you are using okay so cost saving the services are free from the capital investment or capital expenditure because you are not purchasing the computers rather than purchasing sensitive system or equipment for your business you can reduce the cost by using the resources of your cloud server uh, cloud computing service provider you just have to pay as you operate it and enjoy the model based on your subscription plan so suppose you need one computer for now you have a small application or maybe you experiencing something is getting big little big traffic is getting popular so you had more two instance or three instance suppose the customer becoming paid customer you make it the sub to four servers if the income is good else keep it one or two server that way you don't have so think about the scalability and the cost saving you don't have to purchase a lot of things just small start when the business grows or things grows then only you are going for the bigger resources that's how you can save the cost a lot then 24 into 7 availability now think about the case your local uh, local area or suppose your office your if you are hosting application in your local office or in your computer just for example which you never do but just for example think about the case if the electricity go out or maybe some something happened we have the thunderstorm here and the, our local all the electricity was out for around one day i think 24 hours or one day you can say what happen if this happens to you your application down your customer will go crazy if they pay customer of course they will get crazy even the free customer will think what man your server your application is not good why should you use it if you need 24 into 7 availability you must have to move to the cloud you have no option because in the cloud you can have multiple availability zone or multiple you can say you have multiple servers okay or you have some kind of policy to make sure if one server goes down it should create automatically a new server and it should run exactly the same way your earlier server was running and if there is load increasing happening it must create a consequent same copy of the same application running and serve the customer that kind of stuff you can do by the cloud what you cannot do normally in the on premise or local computer okay and you have they have they are giving service level guarantee to make sure that your application never goes down so understand about that part okay that most of the cloud service provider are truly reliable in offering <coughs> their services with most of them maintaining an uptime of 99.9% understand that the workers can get onto the application needed basically from anywhere some of the application even uh, function offline okay <coughs> so that means is more uh, secure it's more fault tolerant than your local or on premise server that's why you can see more and more businesses are coming to cloud and they are going away from the on premise servers okay 
Now, the scalability. Of course, I think uh, I use the scalability word in the beginning also. So, this scalability part. Now you are running one server. When the load is increasing, the number of server server increasing. Suppose uh, and the load is decreasing, you are removing the number of instances. As a just a simple example, you have an e-commerce site, okay? Or just say you are at Amazon Prime Day. It's a very good example. I have, I have purchased a lot of things. I have money, so I purchase a lot of things. Okay, for my wife, not for me much. Okay, but uh, Amazon Prime Day give you deals, okay? And that deals attract more customers. So what? Suppose they are running hundred servers, normally, okay, in day to day basis. And due to this Prime Day, a Prime deal, a lot of customer came to the uh, Amazon site. They they need some mechanism so that the additional load can be handled. In this place, coming to the scaling, we call it horizontal scaling. So what happening here? When the load comes, then whatever they have or any uh, you know any application have a same copy or same image of that application. So when that is high load coming, it create a new instance and the copy of the application running in the new server. Similar, it keep happening until unless it can handle all the load. Once the people start going and it's getting stop, maybe it's coming going night. Then what, when the load increasing. The CPU load and the traffic load also decreasing. Based on that parameter, you are or you are you are removing the servers and of course along with the applications. That's why you are reducing the resources and saving the cost. So scalability gives you an option to achieve infinite like any level of scalability. Scalability means both scale out and in. Out means increasing. In means like getting smaller because you don't need to run another server. So you can achieve that via cloud easily. But think about on-premise. Like if you running uh, five machines, suddenly this kind of deal came. You are giving some deals and Black Friday or say Amazon Prime or any deal. You cannot go immediately in the market and purchase and set it up everything. That takes a lot of time, isn't it? And uh, of course a lot of money also. But in the cloud, it's a piece of, piece of cake. So that's a good thing, isn't it? Okay. Now let's talk about the. All over function. Let's uh, go to the automated updates on the software. So, you know, automating software updates and you know, installing software is kind of pain if you have hundreds of computer locally. You can do, but it's a lot problematic and uh, it's not that kind of fault tolerant. But in the cloud, you can go to massive scale. Suppose you have, like, just for example, it was have a service called Simple System Manager. Using simple system manager, you have hundred thousand server. Doesn't matter if there is a security bug and there is a patch available. You will take only few seconds to run the some single command, and that will update patches all the machines. But you cannot do in local. When you have to configure, you have to connect the LAN and do all this kind of stuff. But if it's a cloud, you don't have to do anything. So, in cloud computing, the server supplies regularly update your software, including the updates on security, so that you no need to you know uh, agonize on wasting your Crucial time on maintaining the system, you find extra time to focus on your important things like how to grow your business. So that's why you can focus more on growing your business. And if suppose uh, normal cases, this cloud service provider um, automatically made this kind of patches and the updates. But again, you have the option to like run a single command and upload all that. So it's better in the cloud than your local machines. That's why. so. See, you are going for the cloud profession, and if you don't know, like any if you the interviewer or maybe the customer asks you. Why we are moving to cloud? So you have to give them the reason you are moving them to cloud, right? So that's why very understand this very basic part, so that you can answer all that kind of questions. So disaster recovery, the business, uh, the biggest disaster of a company can undergo is the loss of data. However, the cloud is a repository for backup the data, uh, the and it helps uh, companies recover the lost data with ease and security. So. Most of the leaders, uh, like who are the top cloud service provider or kind of all clouds, have their automated backup services. Okay, or maybe you can create even your own backup service. That's not a big problem. You can do it. So and that is even a cheap cost. Normal cases in your local. Suppose you have a hard drive and that get corrupted. You lost the data, even if you have a backup. But in the cloud, cloud service providers keep a multiple copy all over the world. Okay, if you are going for a good cloud like AWS or Azure. So that even if one place the data got corrupted, destroyed, something happened, say one region got destroyed, I know it's not going to happen. But just say, 
your data is still safe no matter what. So this kind of disaster recovery can uh, be given by the cloud service provider, not by the local computer. Now understand another part. There is a feature in most of the cloud gifts is the point in time recovery. What it does is it, it keeps track of all the data transition happening and the save the data of the decent uh, data backup in the cloud. So it's continuous backup scheme. If you think about implementing this kind of advanced technology in local computer, it's, you need so much data, so much, so many hard disks, which is humanly not possible. Can be done by if you have a lot of resources already in a data center or a bunch of multiple data centers. Where in, so what is a data center? It's a building full of the compute instances or machines or computer, whatever you want to say. Uh, some uh, many many hard disks, many firewalls, many networking. So data center can do it, but as a normal user, a normal small company cannot do it. So of course you have better chance doing the data recovery or data storage or backup via the cloud service providers. Security. So cloud computing offers great security when any sensitive data has been lost. As the data is stored in the system, it can be usually accessed even if something happened to your computer. You can even remotely wipe out the data from uh, lo uh, lost machines for avoiding it getting the wrong hands. So security part, see, normally in case of your computer, if you store some important data in computer and that get lost when you're you had a most important things getting lost. So in the cloud service, you have, they have dedicated service for identity and access management, all the types of providers, which make ensure who is the owner of the data must make sure who are, should be able to access the data. Okay. And in that way, you can make sure your applications data are secure, your access to your applications or the data is also secure. And if something bad happens, you can always, it's in the cloud, right? They have multiple copy of the, this kind of data. So there is a very, very, very less chance your settings get corrupted and you have a better security there, right? So these are the one of the main advantages. Another is, another is that uh, reduce carbon from footprint sustainable. It's kind of environmental stuff. So what happens if suppose many, many companies have their own machines and uh, they have the resources. So of course, electricity, uh, you have, you know, uh, computer wastage because some computer get bad and wastage on. So that's a problem for the environment, which can be handled by the cloud service provider because they're the master of this, right? They have, they know how to recycle, they know how to uh, reduce the carbon uh, wastage and all, um, make it more sustainable. So it's better option for them to do it instead of us if we manage. And of course, uh, another feature is easily manageable. So cloud computing offers simplified and enhanced IT maintenance uh, and management capacities uh, agreements by the SLA Ag uh, and uh, central resource administrators and managed infrastructure you can enjoy the basic user interface and uh, uh, as a requirement uh, use interface uh, without any uh, requirement for installation plus you are assured guaranteed and timely management and maintenance and delivery of the IT services so what it's saying that you don't have to do all this complexity of managing by the command line and all. Simply, cloud service provider giving us a kind of a UI. Suppose, think about AWS. They are giving you a simple UI. They have listing the services. Simply go there and do whatever you want to do. And that's it. You don't have to manage everything by the command line. That is the reason this uh, cloud service provider becomes so famous. Because the simplicity that created for you as a consumer. Okay. Now, let's go to next. So, yeah, why you need to, I mean, I told you the features, but again, you might as an engineer or, you know, uh, as a, like you are seeking this career, right? So, why you need to learn cloud? First is the high demand. All industries, are, say about IoT, say about the e-commerce, say about what the hell company you are thinking or industry you are thinking, that is moving towards the cloud. An example, health, like, they are the if you if you are working in a health uh, startup, they have more money than normal production house. So if you don't know, that's the reason this there. But maybe some other session I will tell. So anyway, all industries embracing cloud, moving from on-premise to public cloud to save the cost, which is creating demand for the cloud engineers and more opportunities. So since people are moving from normal on-premise system to cloud, of course they need good cloud engineers, architects, or cloud pre-sales uh, engineers or maybe system engineers to help them move into the cloud. 
and that's creating opportunity for us as a computer engineer or as a cloud engineer. Future proof career. Cloud computing is in demand from last many years. Like I am working in the cloud for last many years anyway. In future also going to be uh, stay and grow further. So of course it has a larger scope. But see, cloud or DevOps, this thing will be there. There may be new services, there may be new system, there may be new features. You have to embrace all the updates. It is it is not said or never said that cloud will go down. No, cloud will be stay there. Even if there is decentralization and all, still it will be their cloud. Okay, because not everyone this uh, the decentralization is not ready for production uses yet, and it's still a kind of theory plus some uh, actual practice. But it's not production ready yet. What I think for next ten to twenty years, still the cloud will be there. Maybe some services, maybe some competition will increase. Maybe some new concept and new feature or new service provider will create get created, but as a whole, cloud will be there. You just have to embrace new skills. That's it. Now, uh, so uh, cloud computing. That's the truth. Cloud computing is uh, is in demand from last many years, and the future also is going to stay and even grow further, which simply create more opportunities for the cloud architect, engineers, and application developers. Now the. third point increase your professional profile so if you learn basics of the cloud then you transfer your skill to automation set of automation development networking uh, in the cloud it will definitely increase your professional profile so suppose you are a programmer or say you are a system admin just maybe a local system now now think about that if you have cloud skills so you are a system tester or maybe system manager and all now that you have the cloud knowledge you can do a lot of stuff than other people don't and that make you more valuable than the others the more unique skill set the more on demand skill set you get and of course cloud in demand it create more opportunities for you it improve your profile overall it's a good deal for you okay personal growth and future scope the purpose of learning cloud is not just about getting job in the company if you become skilled enough you can start your own company or you can offer cloud consulting services Just as a hobby, or, or just as a hobbyist, to solve a traditional problem with the cloud skills. Not just that, the skills you gain through the cloud learning journey, you can use it as you see fit, up to your creativity. Just to give an example, I learn cloud, I learn DevOps, I learn programming. What that helped me all together? I created my website. There, there I can just you know show the people what I'm doing. Like I'm hosting my courses, I am hosting my sessions. people coming to site creating traffic and generating revenue which i'm investing like i'm uh, like uh, which i'm investing here and there most of this is donation and all i uh, 50% of the profit i get from the youtube i donate it to you know prime minister funds or chief minister funds i do that so but is getting me good uh, kind of side uh, side amount and side profit which i can utilize for some investment of course like this kind of equipments i have i'm investing in there also i'm interesting for get a good but that i'm able to achieve because i learned the skills and uh, i'm making money from it i'm also working as a consultant for multiple companies because i have cloud knowledge they are coming to me they are saying sandeep how to move the application to a particular cloud platform please tell me how to do it and i do it for hourly basis which i charge of course higher than normal engineers then uh, sometime i do sessions for the cloud training where also i charge not that less little bit i mean not not that much but less but i'm making money so it's i'm i'm trying to say that personal it it's opening a new side income for you so if you have cloud skill you can utilize as a different level like working for a project or as a uh, consultant or as a your own uh, portfolio development like i did so you can do a lot of stuff it's up to your creativity i'm just telling you few that i did i know but if you learn it well if you master it well it's up to your own creativity what you're going to do with it suppose you want to start up for iot device okay maybe you have any device and then you want to create a start up with maybe smart light like a to i got a offer from the tua uh, tua smart dev and they are lecturing like how to from their side i i, I learned that how to you know program the uh, like uh, that thing no just give you example if i have any yeah. uh, just a moment so how to program this kind of smart plug devices okay these are the smart plugs so how to program smart plug how to program iot lot of other iot devices uh, how to program that raspberry pi for them uh, this is a uh, emulator for the advanced this kind of iot devices uh, if i want in the future to create a 
startup just for selling this kind of stuff like making my own i can order from the tour they can uh, ship me the shipments from the uh, the singapore and i can sell them to the people that i can do because i because there's app, this application running in this kind of thing and connectivity with the uh, mobile and all you need a cloud you need a api for that if you don't have any knowledge then how you will understand the flow how you understand the cost of this device because if you don't know what the cl- because the cloud cost will be also included in your product that understanding you will have only if you have the knowledge over that that's the reason is good to know cloud so in your future business also it will be good and the final point of course i talk about earning anyway so high earning when you de- uh, when the demand of cloud professional is high than the current uh, avail- higher than the uh, current available talents you have potential to get high earning of course there is not so many people have the cloud skills there are many people but not so many like norm like phd programmers or like other uh, small stuff right so where they have lot of supply but less demand here you have high demand and less supply to the market hence you can get more profit than like more earning okay uh, so types of the cloud or what cloud option you have but uh, this is the types of the cloud so cloud computing uh, cloud computing is available in three types of usage they are public private and hybrid cloud public uh, sorry uh, hybrid clouds public cloud and private cloud are two terminologies commonly used in the market today let's see what do they mean and the difference between the public cloud and the private cloud so first is the public cloud public cloud is a uh, so this is a publicly accessible framework where you can store data or use it as a virtual machine uh, this can be either by programmatically or automatically uh, sorry uh, autonomously here individual does not have to invest the time and effort in buying physical servers but can get started in no time public clouds are available use uh, like it's a used like pay as you basis okay i don't want to be more definition wise but i have to say it anyway now let me explain in my language what is public cloud any cloud that is publicly accessible and are willing to share their uh, resources with you and uh, and want to rent the services to you as a normal consumer you can purchase services okay i think someone came in the door and asking so give me one minute as okay give me one minute i'm sorry for that just a moment Okay, guys. Sorry, I'm back. Oh, the deep came. Anyway, so yeah, what is public cloud? Uh, public cloud is the like it's a public and open to all, and they want, or like they are open other to register, come and register, verify your credit card or debit card or some bank account. They need some kind of verification of the personal identity. Then onwards, you can create any kind of resource, compute, networking, storage. Doesn't mean whatever the service provider they are giving as a consumer, you can go ahead and rent it or purchase it. Like whatever you want to do, you can do with it. Okay, they are called the public cloud. It's publicly accessible to anyone. Okay, that's why it's called public cloud. And of course, as I stay in the definition, which I never go with, <laughs> so uh, simply means that you can create your like suppose as a you have a AWS S3. Okay, you have a lot a lot of files in local computer. you want to store that data in uh, s3 so you can you can free up your normal uh, machine okay you can go ahead and any public cloud and store in the s3 if you need it frequently you should uh, uh, set the cl- the storage class as the frequent one like normal standard one if you are going to access it after few month or years then you should make it a glacier one so this kind of knowledge what to do and when to do this you will need okay while uh, since i'm talking as a professional Uh, perspective that's the use case you have to handle first first lead with yourself what you're going to do with the cloud then think about the other people how they're going to do it now think about the business how can utilize service this is the view point okay there you should go and the public cloud is a cloud which most people getting used i can say 90% is the public cloud okay in the entire cloud industry then come to the private cloud private cloud is the cloud uh, if no one so okay, if one needs to have a cloud exclusively for the organization uh, for the organization then a private cloud is the best option along with the flexibility provided it can we can uh, offer a data center on the premises 
uh, for security and compliance need a dedicated professional is required to manage the private cloud framework oh, that's the definition part now let's me make a simply it make it simplified only so you are enterprise company you are working for a big company okay they have huge amount okay they want or maybe they have some kind of regulatory just like you know pubg case happen pubg have to make sure they store the data in india okay and they have to make sure the data security okay that's example in that cases you have to you have to utilize a private cloud so that you have you are making sure we have a we have to go through the uh, the regulatory need i'm not showing sharing the data with any other anyway this is virtually and physically not possible to share the data it cannot go out of anywhere that kind of exclusive requirement if you have you have to go for the private cloud where you can just hire out a entire uh, like entire data center or maybe you can talk with a cloud service provider and say we need this this resources and we want it to be dedicated to us okay that means you are privatizing the 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 entire infra for you and you can pay full amount or you can pay rent doesn't matter but the the public cloud what happens since they have all the access to everywhere they manage the resources for you they do a lot of stuff like you are a you are a customer out of their a huge uh, the customer list isn't it so their responsibility is a public cloud to manage the patching manage the system make sure all services work fine it is their their their, their kind of uh, responsibility but if it's a public cloud uh, sorry private cloud it's since as a big uh, like company and an all now there are server entity now they don't have the access to your private cloud now it's your responsibility to hire a dedicated engineer or a professional who should do the like it's not all the time it's a kind of multiple person you will need so what it means that you need dedicated person to manage the cloud and it's completely separate from the public cloud not shareable it's dedicated to you now why people like you understand the people like regular requirement or if you want to have dedicated resource for your application you can go for the public cloud but why people need it uh, that's i also explain right now why not the public cloud and why not the private cloud that also explain by the definition isn't it what is the main difference here is the cost public cloud since it's shared by a lot of people a lot of people utilize services on a sharing basis and the entire infra cost and all the management and everything is getting distributed between all the in this kind of users or clients so a client paying less because all the all the cost getting is a kind of economy of scale the people more using it the cost is less okay and the people less using the private cloud the cost is high the cost of management is high cost of uh, appointing a professional dedicated to this uh, private cloud is high so the cost of the private cloud is lot high than the public cloud remember that part suppose someone asking you i want all this is to be my, for me i want it to be dedicated i want it to be public uh, public cloud you have to confidently say to the person okay go ahead but remember if you go to the private cloud is going to cost a bill a cost of fortune that you might can pay off so first understand what is the cost of running with the private cloud against the cost of running private cloud if your application is neat like pubg they have lot of money like color cords of money they can simply go and buy a private cloud uh, all the resources for them and they can manage it but as a small firm small application small startup it is not possible for them to have a private cloud instead it better for the them to save the cost by going to public cloud and they can utilize the money to hire more engineers and can do a lot of more great stuff uh, faster then come to the hybrid cloud so i talk about public cloud open to anyone for the private cloud dedicated to certain persons hybrid cloud is a uh, like in a combination of public and private clouds for certain business needs who can benefit from the combination uh, the ones who use the hybrid cloud suppose for so some application it's okay to be public it's okay it can happen to public the data can be stored in any kind of uh, region that doesn't matter no one case is not a sensitive data now it's not suppose the health related data or the the kind of pubg people were using that kind of data that data should not leave the country that data not even uh, leave the region maybe in a particular region or maybe in a country that we need dedicated resources for them dedicated storing places them okay keep that part application to the private cloud but the public application the public servers which is not storing sensitive data or cannot be bounded but may not be bounded by the regulations and all uh, can be public use that application as a uh, public server uh, public cloud so 
first it's saving the cost second is maintaining the regulatory access so both of the like based on the both of the world is going to happen with the hybrid cloud so if someone asking you interview why not we go for hybrid cloud why not you go for the private cloud why not go for the public or why should i going for the public cloud you should be able to confidently say say this is the reason okay so you must understand that part now uh, what cloud option we have uh, now let's talk about the more juicy part here so types of cloud cloud computing there are three main types of the cloud computing including infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service each type of cloud computing provides different level of control so it's kind of the kind of different level of control flexibility and management also the accessibility also okay ah. now discuss about all the three main important stuff so very first infrastructure as a service okay in this you have the most control so ias contain the basic building blocks of the cloud it typically provide access to networking feature provides the access to the computer or virtual instances or virtual machines uh it gives the access to the storage space direct access storage okay you can go and do kind of lot of stuff with the direct storage suppose is like suppose you have a machine you are installing mongodb or mysql or any server db then you want to update you want to patch it you want to export it import it whatever the hell you want you can do it there that is infrastructure as a service where do you have the access to the core level okay and uh, it is more similar to existing it resources with so many it departments and developer are familiar like a normal company where you are hosting your uh, kind of you know instances uh, kind of storage you have networking diver nas drives and all that so that's a kind of you know invest uh, that is infrastructure as a service but see, this is the infrastructure as a service one is coming when the cloud service provider managing that infra for you and giving you access to this core level services then we are calling it as a infra as a service example if you are uh, familiar with aws it's aws ec2 if you are familiar with azure it's a uh, azure compute instances if you are in the uh, google similarly they have the compute instances so these are the things called infra as a service where you have the access to core components that is networking storage and the uh, com- virtual virtual machines okay now come to the part called platform as a service okay so let's talk about platform as a service pa- platform as a service or pass removes the need for you to manage the underlying infrastructure usually hardware and the operating system and allow you to focus to development and deployment of your application this helps you to be more efficient as you don't have to worry about a uh, kind of resource procurement capacity planning software maintenance patching or any other uh, of your uh, other uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting involved in running application which simply mean you say you need a uh, this machine like 4 cpu and uh, 8 gb cpu or uh, 8 gb ram but you don't have to think about what underlying software running what uh, pa- when the patching need to do nothing you don't have to re- like remember anything you use that you assign the resource you use the resource but you don't have to worry about the underlying resources any anymore okay but in the infrastructure as a, uh, as a service you have to manage your uh, virtual machines or uh, you have to ma- maintain some uh, database backups you have to make sure you are uh, patching up the machines properly you have to make sure there is security part is fine in platform as a service no you don't have to do anything at all you just have to mention and assign the resources how much you need it and you manage the resources underlying the hardware part and the infrastructure part will be managed by the service providers that's your calling here is the platform as a service very good example of this is the ecs if you are familiar with aws aws eks or ecs there you just mentioning that i need uh, this to make kind of uh, two instance cluster then uh, like it will be using the amazon uh, linux machine and then you bring your own image in the ecs then using the image you can run your application so you are just giving the code or the package that you need to run but the underlying hardware underlying system and all managed by the the cloud service provider that's that is what the pass now i think the software service is the most common thing we have heard now okay the moment i give the example i think you will be clear so saas or software service uh, provides you the complete product okay some you might have saas 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 what is saas it give you complete end to end service 
and uh, kind of product that run and managed by the service provider okay the entire thing is managing by the service provider that means you are not even mentioning that how much cpu how much ram or how much storage you need nothing it's entire service coming to as a full package so you pay this amount this is the storage service you will get this is the kind of uh, compute power will get or this is kind of that you are maintaining you are coming under package system there the solution to the service provider is managing entire thing okay in most cases people are referring saas as refer to end user application okay now i think uh, uh, so what is saas okay think about the uh, uber service or think about the gmail or think about any service that is the end service where you utilizing the services okay and maybe pay as you go i mean you, you have to pay for it and then you utilize services and you don't know about the underlying hardware you don't know about what service software is using you don't know what uh, kind of what kind of infrastructure or what uh, system architecture they are following nothing you know nothing you are the end user you are utilizing services that is the saas software as service now you can software service means what you can uh, pay for the service and you can utilize the service however the way you need and whatever the service the service provider offering to you as a service okay so with saas offering you don't have to think about how the service is maintained or how the underlying infrastructure is managed you only need to think about how you will use that particular software that's it so it's the final output that you can utilize the way you want to use it okay so that's one of the it and uh, i think you understand a very good example of saas is i have told you already and uh, simplest example is the gmail where uh, you don't worry about anything you just send the email this is the email you store your uh, file and all if you want more storage you have to purchase the uh, google one plan and that's how you do it right so one very good example of size is the gmail one okay now next cloud next slide so cloud computing deployment models okay so let's say you are a kind of um, you know application uh, management or application operation engineer or application whatever it is you are managing the application you are in the head of the deploying like they will ask you what to deploy the application now what will be your answer like they say i am running a node js application and uh, i want to host it in local is no more supporting uh, we are facing the problems some um, uh, in premises people are huge load is coming and we cannot handle the load now you have to give them the answer or suggest them what is the solution what they should do then you must like the very first thing in that what modules you want to for uh, what module you want to go for uh, like what model you want to go for the deployment okay so there are three models cloud on premise hybrid okay on premise is exactly the same as you are uh, running in the local or maybe you know have a office full of the machines and all storage and networking where you storing you are hosting the application cloud is a cloud service like any cloud service provider giving you the services like the remote instances or remote cloud storage and all that if you utilize that's a cloud and hybrid is the mix of the both world mix of the on premise and mix of the cloud so some application which are like customer consumer facing uh, that has to be a cloud application the application that are just for the employees or the manager or maybe your local people that but you can host as on premise okay now let's go bit make a bit more deep uh, like deep dive into it so a cloud based application is fully deployed in the cloud and all parts of the application run in the cloud application in the cloud have either been uh, created in the cloud or have been migrated from on premise to the cloud and uh, uh, existing infrastructure to take advantage for the benefits of the cloud computing cloud based application can build on low level infrastructure pieces or can have a higher level services that provide ex- abstraction from the management architecting and uh, scaling the requirement of the core infrastructure so in simple sense you have a like a simple example is you have a node js application or any application maybe php maybe wordpress the problem is that the load is happening so high your application no more hand- able to handle the load in that case you have to think about moving the application from on premise to the cloud where you can set the auto scaling rules setting on on scaling rule if you set a auto scaling rule if the load increase the cpu power cpu usage increase suppose it reaches 70% 60% or 80% you can set cloud watch or any kind of uh, monitoring rule so suppose it reaching 60% you can set a rule to create one more instance if the on average load increasing create one more instance okay 
if suppose the load on average is less than 20% 30% you are removing a instance that's how you manage the scaling in the cloud that you can achieve only in the cloud of course in the on premise you don't have that kind of options so yeah on premise like the talk of the devil on premise deploying resources on premises using virtualization and uh, resource management tools is sometimes called private cloud <coughs> on premises deployment does not provide many of the benefits of the cloud one of the thing is like you know huge scalability part and uh, but sometimes sort for its ability to provide dedicated resources of course it if it's on premise that means dedicated to the uh, like you can dedicate it to whatever the causes the most cases that this deployment model is the same legacy id infrastructure uh, while using application management and the virtualization technologies to try and increase the resource utilization so you know what are the virtualization here uh, you can use the oracle virtual machines you can use the vmware so you think this kind of software you are just making sure you are using your available resources in its fullest uh, capacity that's what you do but still in on premise and it have the limitation in scalability now coming to rescue suppose you have a regulatory requirement some application must be run inside the office just like in uh, uh, internal applications it cannot be public in that cases you need the hybrid cloud where the application that need to be run in the uh, local like uh, in your local office and all it will be in the local office the application that should be user facing or consumer facing will be in the cloud that's how we do it okay okay now come to the cloud service provider thing i in the beginning itself i told you that you have azure you have uh, aws you have go cloud these are the three main cloud provider and if you want to move to cloud as a as a, you want to move your cloud to career you must learn about or any, you master any one any one of these three options be it aws azure google i don't know whatever you find good go if you ask me sandeep give your personal opinion i will go with aws because aws is the market leader aws have lot of more opportunities than the azure and the google cloud if you if you tell me sandeep i don't want to go for aws it have a lot of people already then i will say go for azure now if you uh, say azure also have like immediate after aws azure also have good demand now people looking for the azure uh, managers and engineers so the, that is that is there okay and if you say AWS, Azure, both have huge kind of engineers. Uh, I may not get a chance. I want something uh, more, uh, less resource. They have a less unique kind of, uh, kind of less, uh, less. Uh, you can say demand is less. Also, the resource is less. Maybe I can get more opportunities in the uh, that cloud. So go for Google Cloud. But one thing I want to make clear: go for any three other cloud if you learn and uh, you know expertise. You will not get good opportunity in the market. Okay. maybe you can see a listing here and there but this just for the listing people actually don't give value that much to, to those kind of people on or with having those kind of uh, resource that kind of cloud knowledge you will get good opportunity you will get a stable uh, career option if you master any cloud preferably aws or azure and uh, master all the, not all the services but the core services first then you seek the specialization see i am a, now i'll be coming to that but maybe in just uh, you know within few seconds which cloud option which career option to choose that part but you can choose that way. they have a lot of services and uh, let's go to the final uh, the slide for the final slide the now the what are the skills needed to be the cloud job ready ah, like more interesting part isn't it like this is the part i think most of the people wait for so what you need to succeed in the cloud of course of course of course you need the basic cloud knowledge without basic cloud knowledge you cannot do anything i have one uh, very good friend a uh, very close friend called chirag nayar so chirag also told me at the very beginning around 3 4 year back so sandeep the people who don't master the basic uh, the cloud the com the computing part the networking part the the kind of storage part and all that they will struggle for life they will be never able to they may get certification or may have not even able to get certification but they cannot make use of anything because they are missing the basics and his word is true till the moment i'm speaking okay that's why um, i also knew it from the beginning that's why i master the basics first so uh, i will be definitely asking you to do the same first master the basics learn understand explore what are the uh, all the clouds learn, learn actually 
explore all the top leaders in AWS Azure see what are the compute type they are offering why the compute type is using what is the cost of the particular compute types maybe at the beginning you keep a note of that in the future you may not need but just for learning purpose and your expertise you keep a note of that then suppose someone coming to you as a client and they are asking we have application you want to move to a cloud you can simply look at the type of the application you understand this is falling in this requirement and for this requirement we have these instances and just uh, tell them that and you, you have the option like you already demonstrated you have the knowledge they will ask you to create it okay so have the that knowledge also creating the resource and deleting it because you don't want to keep your build running uh, so that is what reason okay <clears throat> now come to the part of the virtualization and containerization i think uh, it's kind of well known to everyone i will not uh, you know i will not spoon feed okay there are already many videos many courses available youtube and everywhere about uh, the virtualization containerization and all i will just say you must learn virtualization even if it's not a requirement of the job just learn it just learn it even you are you are attending this class that means you are interested in the cloud and in the cloud there are many lot of application running lot of service running understand one of the service I mean, any service okay any service must be utilizing containerization at this moment believe me they are doing it if they are not telling you they are utilizing the containerization services okay that is the kind of uh, you know building level block for their services or any service any cloud service provider any application now containerization is a must so learn about the basic containerization learn about how can suppose you have a simple hello world app suppose you have a wordpress app suppose you have a node.js app suppose any app maybe a command line app that just printing hello world to the uh, anything uh, in the uh, in the system output that application make generation of that from that onwards make complicated use cases like running a, a kind of you know batch operation running a kind of image generation running kind of you know could be anything to be honest you have your imagination is your limit so that is the thing i want to because learn the generation that's why maybe because of that only i focus so much on generation i got the aw0 so you can become that also you become the generation hero for any cloud so that's why i learn the generation part because if you want to run application in the cloud eventually you'll see to fully utilize a instance or a machines capabilities you must learn about containerization so that you can run multiple copy of the same application in a multiple container inside a same machine it will use suppose that machine have a four uh, cpu so that you can run four application each application is a small small unit so it can handle small load but when you have a lot of lot of containers it can handle huge load it's a collective kind of effort what the application will putting if you put in container and multiple running multiple container single machine and you have 10 machines suppose 4 into 10 40 uh, container you can handle a lot of load then a machine which is handling the load that's why to use the full utilization you must use the containerization now linux and self scripting see in the cloud uh, i think everyone if you go google and go whatever you want to search they will say 90% or more is actually on linux so definitely definitely you must linux and if you are utilizing uh, kind of you know uh, windows uh, the first thing you should do okay keep a windows is not a problem good for gaming uh, sometime maybe good for programming but if you want to achieve excellence in your life in the cloud or in the devops stop using the windows i have one windows machine just for processing the video and editing video i have never used for my uh, programming i have never used for anything else just gaming sometimes i get bored and gaming programming maybe live streaming also sometime if my uh, mac is busy or my uh, other uh, laptop busy i use that otherwise not do use the linux okay uh, uh, and uh, keep you you are familiar with the linux learn about self scripting because as a devops engineer as a cloud engineer also sometimes or many times you have to run some automated scripts and this kind of automated scripts are actually based on the linux or kind of linux, like kind of bunch of combination of linux commands so if you don't know linux you will feel a, a kind of you know uh, less confident which i never want anyone to be to feel more confident just run it simple command na cat uh, kind of delete uh, make directory remove it i have a, a very good session on youtube itself where i have covered the basics 
don't go for my channel there is a lot of more channels available which have cover in like uh, free code cam they have dedicated session for the command line and all so go for that i mean it give you so much knowledge you cannot imagine okay so do linux self scripting that's kind of a basic building block of the cloud so you must learn it programming now programming is optional i will say see if you learn programming that's more than good i mean uh, at least one programming language i will say either javascript or python but it's completely kind of um, you know optional i will say learn about programming knowledge if you want to get a top level top level position means application cloud application programmer uh, like a cloud team lead this kind of thing i'll be coming uh, while discussing in the uh, via the diagram i will explain so don't worry automation see automation coming automation you need uh, linux or self scripting but anyway automation is the most important benefit of the cloud services if application can be programmed to make uh, to make their own uh, correct decision without human intervention it can increase the efficiency uh, of course cloud professional have a role to play in facilitating this kind of automation S specifically you uh, they need to Uh, be well versed in uh, mechanics of business cloud architecture and the different uh, components that interact with or depend on others so see suppose automatic like this uh, automatic sending of mail i schedule it in my uh, morning time uh, last night also one missile happens so by mistake I, instead of this time i said uh, 5 am it was by mistake then since I have automation in place there is a bug actually uh it when it after the time the automation it didn't change it was configured to send the email uh, in the 5 am 1 hour 5 am before like 4 am that was the email was sent okay that means while even you are sleeping you can send the messages to people people think you sent it uh, but <laughs> that's not the case one the invitation the official invitation mail okay not the webinar mail uh, i have sent officially but in the like for this time session one like 15 minutes back of starting the session you will get an email automatically say the session going to start in 15 minutes that i have manually configured as automation so that makes sure that this time when happens this email will get shoot to you people and you can start joining and when the session getting started then only automatically one mail should be sent to you guys okay so this kind of automation i'm just giving example this kind of automation is possible just because i am using cloud i am hosting my application in aws lightshell you can host in anywhere and there i have set up the database services there are set up the email services like these are happening because i have set up a uh, properly email service otherwise it will never reach you to your email you will go to spam or it will never reach out to you so i had set up all the services then i have set up the automation and is giving me good result you people coming to me you got the email you came here and you asking question you are getting benefits so automation have its benefits isn't it so that is the reason you must also learn the automation because in real life the customer the, the 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 people the company persons everyone will give you responsibility to set the automations and if you don't have the skills required for the automation you might see that as a the kind of backwards kind of thing you or maybe you feel a little bit ashamed because even simple email automation you should know how to do it simply uh, create like you should learn about the cron job you should learn about the uh, kind of you know interval Uh, polling kind of thing so these are the basic uh, concept you must learn to make the automation even in automation there are a lot of software if you learn python you can set up the like advanced level automation by the python that's why everything comes like a harmony kind of thing so one uh, skill facilitates other skill if you learn the linux skill scripting it will help you in the automation if you learn the automation you can send automatic emails automated jobs it can make your life a lot easier if you learn programming you can make even advanced level of automation So this kind of server one related to another. Okay, uh, then we have the databases. The so knowledge on popular databases such as MongoDB and MySQL are expected because suppose as a cloud engineer or the cloud architect or cloud application developer, they ask you to please use the MySQL or MongoDB. But if you have zero knowledge about that, how can you install it? How can you utilize it? So you need basic knowledge. I would say even better if you have some working knowledge. So get yourself familiar with MySQL and at least the MongoDB. These two are the main one. Okay. and the finally the cloud service provider platforms because ultimately you have to provision the resources you have to purchase the like sp as you go model like ultimately you are creating the resources machines maybe databases maybe the storage you are creating the spaces right for that 
that you have to learn how to create, how to destroy, how to operate, and what cloud provider performance there. Again, let's just take a look. Previous slide: AWS, Azure, GCP are the leader. You must master any of these three. Again, my personal opinion: always AWS because you will have more opportunities in the market. Okay, now last point. I think actually two have two point left. There is a matrix and analytics. So if you run your uh, you know workload in the cloud. You need some way to track like these machines are running this way, or uh, kind of these machines are uh, kind of not running properly. This error happening, so error log tracking, or these machines got a huge workload like thousand requests per minute or second. So you have to understand from which IP got the request, then make sure that IP is not a blacklist IP, or maybe you want to blacklist. Make sure that no blacklist IP should be able to access your application. So for that you need monitoring and uh, analytics, right? That kind, this is kind of all the service provider and there are custom tooling also open source software giving you that kind of uh, you know tools. Now you have to learn this tool and utilize that. So expertise in um, matrix analytics and understanding in the uh, kind of understanding uh, understanding which matrix should be applied to specific cloud services will stand you in good stead. That's because the skills enable you to demonstrate the ROI of the business cloud technology. Okay, that's also very important to understand the metrics and uh, analytics. Now the final point, cost management. See, in the beginning while talking about the feature itself, I told you that one of the biggest feature is the cost management because there is no capital cost and it's a pay-as-you-go model. But what happens that when you begin or as a fresher? Or maybe who don't know much about the cloud and the pricing, they create a lot of resources, a lot of lot of resources, which they never track of. They keep a track of it. So what is the problem then? If you don't stop or destroy the services that you have created, you are still keep paying for them. At the end of the month, when you see thousand dollar, two thousand dollar bill, what happens? That that is the problematic, isn't it? Okay, and uh, you may not pay as a uh, may not pay that, isn't it? So one problem happened. Uh, see, even 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 uh, there are uh, you know I, one uh, very good friend, like student or you can say family of mine, running a service and or at the end of the month they got huge one million bill because there's a mistake that uh, their application have a kind of loop and that loop calling one service continuously and that created huge bill. Now that doesn't happen over time on a single day. If it happens single day, they will of course will say nothing. They will reduce the bill and they will just cut cancel the billing. But if they see it's kind of cumulative and you still didn't notice, they will ask the as a cloud service provider. Uh, they will say you you have you have to you must have set the budget. You must have checked your cloud service daily. It's your responsibility, not mine. So if you could have set the budget, if you could have checked and analyzed the data, the the cost data, and like using the cost explorer similar kind of services. You could have reduced the cost a greater depth. The money you save is the actually the money you have earned. This is the basic concept there. So that's why you must have some cost management skill. Understand how to use the cost or the billing related tools that each cloud service is providing, or if there is any open source tool or some tools that is coming as very good uh, cost management application coming at very cheap. You may just try that and apply that. Okay. That's why the ability to determine and monitor the cost and the workload estimation are valued skill. This is a very big skill. People think cloud engineer or cloud application developer there means creating a lot of uh, servers, application, and all. No, the very first thing, I, the concept, the most important job is to make sure the bill is low and the. See, you need suppose there is a huge workload and you have good revenue stream. Then you have to keep like suppose that uh, particular application need twenty uh, CPUs and uh, say thirty two thirty GB or thirty two GB RAM. You have to give it. If you the 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 point is there that if there is a good revenue stream and your application really need it, give it. But if you're a small business just getting started, you don't have a lot of huge workload. What is the point of having ten thousand two thousand? What is the point of having Uh, this kind of hundred uh, uh, or twenty or thirty, whatever CPU usage or huge RAM, no, right? So you have to map the business needs with the application. Keep in mind, you have to maintain the cost. That is one of the most important skill a cloud engineer, developer, architect have it. Okay.
understand that part very carefully okay now i think uh, that's it now uh, i think i told you guys that i will tell you about the career path but let's come to the main point so the main point here is that which cloud career path you should choose i think that's everyone waiting for so uh, i think uh, let me show let me go over what are the okay so so most of the cases i see you have uh, kind of system manager kind of you know uh, so yeah just again uh, comment down if you already commented on it's good if you are didn't comment down what is your profession do it now because i will be analyzing and giving answer on that so first i will go by the comment by comment so first profession which is the first profession i get i worked in google workspace sme Mm, and okay, uh, let's see other thing. Uh, application monitoring. So suppose you are in the application monitoring. Okay, so you have the application monitoring. App monitoring. Okay, so you must already have the knowledge of the life cycle. So you know life cycle of the software very well. It's a good skill. Now what should you do? you know about the logging and i think log checking and uh, you know analytics part bit well which is again a plus point uh, like uh, log checking checking plus uh, uh, error checking okay that's a plus point so you already have that isn't it now what you should do do forward so first you might uh, create first in create instances instances then add cloud watch kind of logs or maybe whatever cloud provider you choose based on that service you'll see logging part so let's say uh, cloud watch just for example okay then understand if you uh, make some request http request like in an application and check then see store the log in the cloud watch okay and then use the log insights okay and then uh, extract the you valuable data uh, some analytics okay so you have the or you have the opportunity to become a cloud analytics so and what to put it so you have the the easiest path to go for the cloud analytics okay you have you can become a cloud analytics very easily you have the already app monitoring part right so it was uh, who's question again and i got a very end so we have asked it if you have application monitoring part you can become a cloud analytics very easily it's a profession it's a cloud specific profession you still have to spin i mean as a cloud analyst or cloud uh, 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 analytics person uh, you still have to spin instances you still have to so the data you have to make some checking but since you have knowledge of the application monitoring this is the best path you can go for okay this is one now what is the next let me see windows server admin now it's again good part it's what is the path oh man every day <laughs> comment happening i'm going very end of it <laughs> but okay fine don't worry uh windows uh, so Windows Server Admin is Chetan Singh. Windows Server Admin. So, Windows Server Admin. Okay. <clears throat> so you are a Windows Server Admin. So you know how to manage Windows. Okay. Do spin a Windows. Okay. Windows instance in a cloud. Try to manage that. Okay. that's the first job you should do if you are not doing already i think you may be already doing it you already know it i think you should go for the power cell okay master the power cell that will bring you the opportunities and see when you start working on this kind of cloud specific job eventually you will come to the linux okay eventually you will come to the linux then again go for the linux commands learn master it then the shell scripting okay this is the path you should go for so you first go learn about the cloud spin the instances then the linux command then you might be want to devops so learn about like 
if there is application run about the ci cd run about the like part of the ci cd itself source control okay like git or if it aws then uh, code commit okay if all service provider have their own service names i'm not going to go for that but this is the flow if you have a windows service background you have the best choice to become a devops engineer dev oops engineer okay see you can become from devops to uh, sorry uh, windows server admin to become devops engineer if you like master windows master linux uh, cell scripting and all then the ci cd which is continuous uh, uh, like integration and deployment of applications you if you are admin that means some application is running there isn't it and if you run to automate it and all you are a good devops engineer already so uh, then the source control uh, then the uh, maybe some kind of automation tools and all so including all that okay you can become a devops engineer it's the best path for you now again next so keep the comments coming okay then i can make you the best suggestion possible uh chetan okay aditya doubt very okay so it's a mechanical engineer of 2021 currently working on tcs i have fundamental knowledge of aws so you become uh, so rohit uh, which which uh, career you join i don't know because on this from this message can i tell if you are in the development is already good you can either become devops engineer cloud or even better if you are a programmer you can become a cloud application programmer you can go for that it's ashis uh, ashis or what let me see okay okay it's ashi i'm working with the aws pre sale with 3 year plus experience i'm um, learning devops so you are in the aws this is man you are already in the good part so you have already aws knowledge okay you already have it so you are plus point this one is then learn about the ci cd okay if you don't know about ci cd in with aws i already have one dedicated playlist or dedicated series on uh, ci cd with aws must check my channel it's sandeep just search by sandeep das in youtube okay and you will find it then go to playlist and they will find the uh, uh, this uh, ci cd with aws it's a full 16 i think 16 minute videos if you do it i can guarantee you will become master of devops over time of course so that you do it then uh, learn about the cell scripting because you will need it uh, to automate things and of course on talking about the cell scripting you must have the linux so if you do all that you can become devops engineer okay you can become devops engineer that's it now next we have it here first i'm going through the comments then i will go i'll go through the question if i don't cover it so if you are asking in question you can ask it here because a lot of more uh, message i can see in the the uh, this uh, message section so it's uh, next who is next project uh, project management okay okay project management just for example so if you are doing project management okay project management is a common thing that's why i pick this one you first master any cloud any cloud okay aws uh maybe azure or maybe gcp i will definitely suggest aws not just because of the aws zero but you get more opportunities there so go for any cloud then what you should do learn about the core services okay then you are project manager so you know cost is important learn about the cost management okay then learn about the monitoring which is kind of included in the core but i'm just emphasizing it more uh, monitoring services okay 
learn these basic stuffs learn about the core services cost management monitoring you can become cloud solution architect okay do a certification uh, do aws just for example aws uh, solution architect okay associate start with that my handwriting like a doctor <laughs> okay anyway uh, so go with the aws solution architect and that will help you to become the solution architect since you already have uh, project management experience it will definitely definitely going to help you i will be coming to the next session where we we'll talk about how to maintain your same salary so i'll be telling you your reference as well so learn about any cloud then uh, core services cost management monitoring then go for any solution architect uh, solution architect as well as certification and if you are going for aws go for the solution architect that's how you can become so one of the most also important part is to understand how can you use multiple services together as a combination so suppose aws uh, ec2 plus rds complete application your application hosting the application in the ec2 and then you are using some rds say uh, mysql instance i told you about mysql right some database service with combination uh, you are hosting application so this kind of stuff using multiple services combination how to use so service okay just a moment yeah service combination this is one of the important stuff okay service combination so learn that well and you will become a cloud solution architect okay now who is next mm, i see a lot of messages so i'll be coming i'll be coming all okay so no no worries on that even if it take me few more uh, minutes or hour i will be not a problem i have meeting starting from 7:30 so we have time I'm sorry you missing the your session but man what i can do uh, i also have some time constraint and all but yeah i'll be covering whatever i can then we have here oracle fusion so middleware i will come in call it middleware so i i think you must have some system uh, system engineering knowledge okay so that's a plus point you have good thing there learn about the basic uh, cloud basic you, you see if you understand the system well you will understand the cloud basics also well after that uh, go for any uh, cloud leader aws azure uh, gcp okay go for any particular cloud i will say aws then again for you also core services okay then uh, cost then some ci cd ci cd then uh, monitor okay so the basic stuff you don't have to understand cd setup <laughs> i have a lot of ios application already have two iphones okay so you understand the core services you understand the ci cd and all that you have the chance to become devops engineer okay so this is your path from middleware you have best chance in the devops architect after you learn the core services ci cd cost and monitor you can become a uh, devops engineer so next i know i'm going fast because there's a lot of people waiting for their answer right so please bear with me so let's see what i've covered till now so we have here working on storage and backup uh, storage and backup infrastructure okay and you want to go for devops so storage and backup so is mind of uh, you are in the data position for data kind of system manager data combination so you already know about the data which is a plus point okay then you are you have to learn about some existing cloud uh, cloud uh, db services okay this is the first thing we should since your backup is like your basis data you must go for the cloud db services okay storage services okay then go for the core services okay so let me just move it properly 
core services okay then monitoring and uh, then ci cd again ci cd in my channel i am telling repeatedly in my channel there is one dedicated session which is the quality I have made and it's free for all go to my youtube channel there in the playlist look for the that devops uh, uh, with aws devops okay with if you are going for aws of course otherwise not with aws okay go for that you can become devops engineer okay i'm telling maybe simple but it's not a simple journey ci cd a lot of effort you have to push monitoring lot of have to push core services like compute okay now i i don't think i explain the core service well compute uh, then the networking this part you have to focus a lot you already the data part you already know the data part so you are good there okay so good now only compute networking but you have to focus now next part mm google well, this is me uh, okay I am the okay, graduate student. I am inspired. Okay. Capacity management is up. Okay. Capacity management reporting side of business work needs. Okay. So it's kind of saying the actual. Okay. You are struggling with the actual path to cloud. So you have uh, SQL and uh, report. So kind of SQL uh, plus reporting. Okay. I am taking that like. Kind of reporting in average reporting. You are in the reporting. Who have some SQL skill? Okay, so you know SQL. So you must have the basic data level knowledge. So your part also similar like US one, but I will suggest if you are not sure about the path, I will say go for the cloud solution, or maybe cloud data solution architect if you want to. There is option to master the data services particularly, and uh, data and analytics. Okay, so you can become a like data. We call it data engineer and all data scientist also. If you can, if you have a knack for the mathematics and all. Otherwise, data analytic or the cloud solution, cloud data solution uh, architect. You have lot of options. See, uh, the more profitability, I will say, you you go for the solution architect part. It will be more profitable. But uh, sometimes people look for specialization. If you go for the data analytics, there also you might make some money. It's good. again most important part you have to understand the core services mostly the compute part plus the networking part okay networking i'm using the vpc there is a virtual private cloud vp uh, vpc plus the ip plus the networking full depth okay do you have to all that do all that then you can become cloud solution architect so focus on the core services data services you already know uh, already know something about data and sql it will be good for you okay so cloud solution architect as a data part or maybe the cloud data solution uh, cloud data uh, cloud data analytics or cloud analytics part those are the two main options for you uh, okay uh, i have here hello sandeep feeling good okay uh, sandeep telecom engineer is a good path telecom engineer you know i i used to meet with a lot of people in mumbai who were telecom engineer and become a cloud solution architect and i learn a path from them okay so you are a telecom engineer most cases you uh, i it will be uh, good to great if you might uh, say that me that what kind of day to day job you do but it's okay so you have the basic system level system, uh, system level knowledge okay system knowledge like normal computer instances and all normal see, computer knowledge you have which is plus point now what you should learn uh, choose for any uh, cloud aws gcp azure okay, whatever you want to go for go for learn about the uh, core services just like any other uh, person in team core services core services then must focus good part on the networking okay then do we just learn know that overview of the data part no overview of data okay you don't need to become a data engineer just know the data part bit well just overview knowledge uh, 
uh, then learn about the i think i forgot to all the places i told a lot of things but security also fall under uh, the core services okay security i think i missed this one so security also you must do security fall under core service so compute plus the networking okay plus the data just the overview plus the security also now security is like a basic it, it it's just like so natural to me i forgot to mention because security i am the index management you must learn the security also where you need to assign the uh, access and the authorization part okay now that is done there mm, what do we have here mainframe which you already cover the devops part you will become get chance in the devops engineer now we have here i am arranging this program i have hands on experience aws was looking for upskill in devops so if you already have aws okay or azure or gcp and you want to go for the either devops okay or the say cloud what you should do is master master the in demand in demand service okay that's the first step you already have the basic master in demand service or whichever is in trend okay master that then you already have the you master the core services you already know it so nothing to tell the just the specialization part whatever is famous focus on that then what the devops part learn the ci cd uh, linux like master the linux master it then uh, learn the sales scripting okay okay if you go by that path you can uh, you can become either devops engineer okay or cloud solution architect okay you can become like that but you have to master if you are going for the devops master ci cd linux sales scripting course course you already know the ci cd services suppose aws you already doing the aws right so aws so then learn cps aws learn about the code commit learn about the code build learn about the that uh, code deploy and most important of all uh, i don't know what happens orientation change anyway let's clear it so learn about the if it's in aws devops learn about the code commit learn about the code build code deploy then code uh, pipeline okay learn about this four service and you will become great devops engineer in aws okay learn about that these things <sighs> okay now next let's see what is next Mm, let's see. QA. I think that's a good part. Okay, you have a QA. Okay. So QA, what they do is system testing. Okay, system testing or application testing or automation sometimes also. if you are already doing any of things especially the automation you are already this best point if you do system or app testing you have the knowledge of the uh, application life cycle okay which is a plus point why i'm saying if you uh, know about the system testing and app testing you have a application some knowledge application not the programmatic but the life cycle part automation you can like automation is the heart of the devops isn't it then master any cloud code services cloud whichever cloud you choose code services okay and then uh, 
sales scripting i will definitely say sales scripting okay if is already you know is good otherwise sales scripting and uh, linux plus sales scripting okay then ci cd in the previous lesson i told you what is ci cd the source part the uh, the build part that is making docker build or application build you already maybe heard about some things because you are a qa you know about some of the ci cd part maybe the which is the ci cd is what source to build to deploy and pipeline it that's the basic now this is not everything about the cd but that's the basic flow of the uh, the ci cd so if you know the storage providers the how to integrate the with the builds and how to deploy you can become devops engineer okay you have very good chances now let's see mm okay let's see what we have here mainframe already covered so uh, oracle integration i think oracle media also is covered i guess so if you have programming knowledge okay so if you have programming knowledge you are in the the best position if you can imagine you know the about the application okay app development you know you know about some programming language you can use that for automation and you if you want to even become devops engineer you can have a still scripting because using programming you can automate okay but if you still you know self scripting is good for all, most of the cases so i will definitely suggest the self scripting as a additional skill is optional but recommended okay recommended Oh, so programming, you are good. Automation, since you are already in the programming, do self scripting. Learn about the cloud services. Okay, most cases, uh, first learn about some uh, cloud services like core services. Then you must learn about the containerization, container like Docker. Kubernetes is too will be too much at over click for you. But if you are a system engineer who are going for the DevOps, like very hard DevOps, so that will be recommended for them. So Kubernetes, okay. And once you do all that, then uh, yeah, serverless, serverless. So you will mainly have two parts, okay. Since you are a programmer, you can become cloud with the cloud knowledge, cloud application. application programmer okay cloud application programmer or you can becomes uh, you can become De devops engineer okay you have this two option either cloud application programmer or devops engineer if you have the programming background is up to you most paying will be this is pay best okay and for that you need to learn additional if you are focusing on the cloud application learn about the serverless serverless because if you want to become a cloud based programmer serverless must if you want to become a devops engineer learn all that it will be enough okay that's for the programmers who have any one year two year programming language okay mm. SQL Server I have already covered. My SQL so okay, there is response and link to answer. Mm, okay, it's IBM data provider in a cloud uh, is a product to hand. Okay, Anurag saying, uh, data data power is a product to handle rest of the SOAP services. XML request response header and link. Mm, please ask me to move to it. So if you any say API management, I'm saying. API management. Okay, so you know about the basic of the cloud, I think, because it's a request. 
you know about the request and response okay so you have the basic cloud knowledge you already might have and uh, you have some api at least you have the api knowledge okay then learn the since you are going for the aws aws is the goal here since aws is the goal learn about the code aws services okay then learn about the after like code services also include some kind of base uh, basic db but i'm saying compute like ec2 plus the uh, ecs plus the serverless okay then learn about some db so that rds and uh, that you have like in rds itself there is aurora db okay learn about that also then uh, learn about the dynamo db okay so these are the things we must learn of course learn about i mean i'm not telling it but learn about s3 is is most important i guess okay so and you become the aws solution architect of course do a basic solution architect as a associate okay certify to that and then you will become a w solution architect i think i have covered most of the cases yeah most of the cases i know there is a question answer section monitoring well take support fresh score pe path sir like to clear solution agar exam so which job the uh, of aw so which job we can apply for what option we have for us so if you go for the solution architect uh, you have the cloud solution architect to so manage the cloud manage the cloud uh, cost of the cloud then uh, uh, and uh, there will be some uh, you know cloud infra management like and maybe you can go for the terraform yeah so all the skill like cloud okay devops i talked about right you can automate automate everything in the cloud and automate the infra using cloud using tools like suppose aws cloud formation learn this this things okay i'm told telling you but learn this thing whenever you get chance i'm telling you but don't forget this one cloud formation is very hard to learn to be honest <laughs> i it took me already i think it's almost 3 um, or 4 month it took for me to understand properly uh you have terraform okay one of the most kind of most valuable and uh, in demand devops tool okay because it's you can in, uh, like you can uh, provision all the infra and destroy in a like second or like a uh, you know thanos chutki one chutki you can delete all the resource wow i'm just you know kidding you can run a command and you can do all, delete all that so that you can do by the terraform okay and i suggest at least learn the terraform there is other tools like you know chef puppet ansible okay you can learn the ansible but i will definitely suggest the terraform i'm telling you it is one of the life changing skill if you have but terraform skill itself is not enough you have to also know because terraform or any this uh, automation and all you have to do on some cloud so again falling to aws uh, azure gcp okay so you learn any any of them okay any of them i will say is the aws then work with terraform that is one of the most seeking demanding skill will can can change your life okay okay i think i have covered most of the questions if let me just once last time verify that if there is uh, any important topic okay one thing is in finance i forget finance is also important like if you are a finance person want to move to cloud then what like you are doing bcom or any like you know finance background which is rare 
they come to IT, but since you are coming. Since if you are in that phase, oh, it's good too. So uh, in finance, then first learn about uh, the first. You have to choose which cloud to go. But if you are not any sure, go it for AWS. It's kind of you don't know which cloud to choose. Go for AWS. That my uh, final words. Okay. Then learn the core services. But since you have a finance viewpoint, first learn about the cost explorer. Okay. Since you are finance expert, that's I'm telling you. Cost explorer. Then, like classify, classify a list types of of instances. Also, cost explorer. I'm just want to talk about the cost explorer. Learn about budgeting. Okay, budgeting, setting alerts. Okay, setting alerts and all. So yeah, uh, type of the instances. Or you know, uh, like you know, type of EC2 instances. More to be honest, then like you know, what is M? What is T? What is I? What is uh, you know, all other instance type? What are the use cases? Okay, use cases. Then launch instance. Launch instances, and then uh, remove the instance. Okay. This kind of you know practice if you do. And then, of course, you have to learn about the like I told you, right? Core, core services. This can help you to become one of the cloud uh, solution architect. Because remember, I told you one of the most important skill to have this, you know, cost management part. If you master it, you know, now if you master the cost part, and if you go to interview, say, I know. In depth about the cost management in the AWS, along with the resource creation and destroy and managing the infra, you will have a salary level that a normal developer can't, a normal uh, cloud developer can't, because you have a finance background, some IT certification, plus the this kind of uh, you know skill set, uh, mainly in the finance budgeting, uh, cost estimation, and maybe additional some software, that will make you one of the good candidate for the AWS solution architect. Again, for all this kind of role, if you are for a solution architect. I highly suggest the certification. Okay, otherwise getting job will be bit difficult. It's not impossible, but difficult. Okay, that's why it's very important. Let's see any other questions. Okay, not much questions. I think I have covered most of the questions. Uh, I, there is actually a lot of similar kind of questions. Okay, there is one thing: development EDL. So, E T. Uh, okay, so it's more of the data processing. Okay, EDL. What they do is the data processing. They actually import uh, kind of filter process like EDL. Okay, EDL job. So more of you work with the data part. So first, like just like the data engineer part, uh, focus on the data cloud. Okay, cloud data part. Focus on that. Learn. Of course, I to I tell everyone about the core services. So for you also. Core services is the must do. Any position you want to go for, core services, compute. Again, I'm just repeating myself. Compute. Uh, then the uh, DM that is a storage and networking. Okay. Then the security. Basics. That is the basic knowledge of all that. Okay. If you do that, you can become either cl uh, cloud solution architect. Architect or cloud data analytics positions. Okay, because you are loading data, you are uh, refining the data, you are extracting the data, you are transforming the data, so you become a data position. Okay, these are the things you can do. Oh, oh, I think I have covered a lot. It's already seven, eight, five to seven. Two hours session already. <laughs> okay. So guys, I think uh, I have covered a lot of the pass and all. I think I think we are missing one particular things that uh, how to utilize your existing skill set to get better opportunity. So think about the part where I have shown you what skills you have and which data path to choose. If you go for a matching skill like data ETL or data position, and you are going for the data analytics part in the cloud cloud data analytics part, 
where still you have to use the cloud services plus most to your specializing on the data part in that case you can you you can use your existing uh, experience as intact and then you are moving to cloud that way you can whatever salary you have you can at least add 20 30 or maybe double of that if you are that talented so that's a good thing similarly for the system engineer or test engineer or qa you already know the life cycle so qa i will say you will see uh, there are cloud native application uh, many sort of doing cloud native application development or cloud application development or aws specific or aws partner firms if you move to as a qa of that firms okay you will see lot of this kind of application coming for testing and all you go there and learn okay you learn that and then only intra team you ask for them i have like bus do some certification aws or as a whatever you think is best for you you can do the certification you do the certification and then what you should do is apply for either in the same company say i am qa knowledge i have kind of uh, cloud that in depth cloud knowledge as certification move me to the cloud team or cloud development team or solution architect team okay or devops team whatever your ex, your target is you can ask and you have your uh, salary intact maybe increasing a lot because you are uh, switching to even better role that's how you can keep the same because you see if you are in the separate uh, kind of uh career path and moving to like very separate one at one jump the salary will not be that either they will ask for you know very lower salary and i don't really like that and i don't you to like that as well so make a in between transmission uh like transformation first move to the company as a qa if it's focus that is a cloud or devops they following very good but very highly uh kind of uh they are very good company and they are renowned for their cloud and devops you can ask the engineer did they use it the engineer just talk with them and they will tell you okay that's the way if you join there you have the option to join as a cloud or uh, devops engineer whatever your goal is and you can save your you can have your same in salary current salary intact or better suppose you are a data analytics okay if you go for the uh, data analytics uh, kind of position just like i told right suppose you are a programmer you have the best as the option if you go to the cloud application development again you are utilizing the cloud services plus you are programming for cloud application like serverless like cloud native applications uh, like uh, you know uh, cloud sdk so with aws uh, maybe s3 you are uploading downloading maybe with some in database services like uh, ids and all you are uh, programming application so this kind of knowledge give you like if you from the normal programming nation programmer to become a cloud application programmer i can tell you that from 50 to 100% salary you can demand more if you're moving to the other company you can do that okay suppose you are a kind of you know system engineer now you are the sub, the best position because you already have system knowledge you already have most probably have the sales scripting or maybe linux knowledge use that knowledge to make a jump in the devops because for the system engineer you have most better position in the devops if you don't think you don't want to go for devops you can either go for cloud also they are also you need you have linux system you have uh, all the services they need the people to manage as a cloud architect so you can go for that also that way if you move this way then your salary will be intact again same strategy join to a company which have this kind of team which are doing work on it suppose aws you want to move for aws system engineer uh, devops or uh, cloud architect so move to a company that are working exclusively on aws or maybe as we suppose as a company there are a lot of companies if you go to their site or maybe some engineer so go to a company in the in linkedin and anywhere there's a filter search the keyword with aws for the particular company and see the engineers getting listed see what skills they have and you can see that your skill level can fit on it and you what skill you need to learn that's how think strategically the more strategically you think the more you use your brain you will see that there are a lot of back doors how can you join the company keeping the salary intact or maybe higher and then move to the team other team because they are already cloud engineer they are already working so hard on that you also learn from them you improve yourself get certified uh, uh, improve your knowledge and then join a get a company with the targeted uh, position you want that's how we do it okay <sighs> i think i talked a lot So that's it, guys. I hope you like the session. I know it's a two-hour session; it's supposed to be one hour, but you know I got carried away. I think you guys also enjoyed the session. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what I need to tell you. 
this session will have a recorded version maybe uh, it takes some processing time either by tonight or tomorrow i will send you the uh, list of the i mean the this recorded session as well as the document that i'm showing you two things also link to my uh, devops uh, tutorials like devops with aws and uh, i think you already might have got already one mail from me regarding the terraform if your target is for the cloud or the devops you must learn the terraform i'm telling you learn the terraform course you'll be in best position than the rest okay do that okay i hope you all like the session and if you have any questions you can always reach out to me on linkedin i think you see me already i talk a lot about cloud and programming and devops so you can reach out to me there or you already have my email address this is how we communicate um, so you can simply reply to me or you can send message to me i'll try to reply as soon as possible okay okay guys have a nice day ahead and thank you for staying this long i hope you learned something from this session which will be beneficial for you and i will try to keep the next session on saturday on sunday only again sorry guys for this i don't had any opening uh, last week saturday and sunday i was like all booked i my health also were not that great anyway so thank you guys soon see you i mean hope you see soon in next session okay thank you thank you very much and again if you didn't subscribe to my channel do subscribe my channel uh, there i post a lot of free content like i work a lot of hard uh, a lot of hard work like the terraform course i uh, for two months some night also i work for 3 am 4 am but i make that course possible and this available to you guys so watch it okay okay man thank you uh, bye and uh, have a nice day bye